So as a guy who who loves those sports and clearly uh, is not just entrenched in, in the in the wrestling itself, but in the medium, how do you even like decide like, all right, let's do fight. All right, let's do AW. All right, let's do this particular indie. Like, how do you even decide what's uh, what's possibly a good move for you? So well, in, in the early days, it was, you know, who we could work with, who we thought had potential. And fortunately, I've had the long term relationships with a lot of different guys. I mean, if you go to an AEW show and walk in the backstage, every single person working on the production crew worked for TNA or Ring of Honor, one of those two. I worked with both those companies, so I've, I know a lot of these people 10, 15, 20, and sometimes in 30 years. Right. So you knew that they had the right uh, uh, basis. If I look at a show and I don't know anybody or haven't heard of any of the wrestlers, let's give them a little time, okay? And, um, you know, we do look at the quality of the programming. Uh, production, which is, uh, believe it or not, one thing we don't really worry about is what's going on in the ring from a wrestling standpoint, because independent wrestling in general, the wrestlers generally know how to wrestle. They're not hurting themselves. They're safe there. Because sometimes I've watched wrestling from South America or Latin America uh, uh, or you know, South Africa, and they scare me, you know, because they're not quite as trained. And it, it really is amazing. That's one thing that we don't really have to worry about, um, the quality of the wrestling in the ring. It's everything else around it, and that's what we care about. So as long as the the production Teams yeah, we want to make sure it's it's um, you know we're we're keep raising the bar you know uh, even ESPN starts somewhere with the quality of shows and you keep raising it what we're requiring people to be able to do and it's everything from you know the audio systems to the lighting to the presentation of the show and so forth. What what do you lose sleep over? <laughs> Working on contracts and stuff. I'd rather work on stuff like we're doing here, where we're doing you know twenty live shows over 100 live hours of programming to promote. I, I live for that. And uh, so not, not only sleep on much anything anymore, I've been doing this stuff for almost 40 years, so. Uh, do you think Do you think there's a limit? Like, okay, we, we have to cap out at some point, whether we're gonna go after, you know, esports or tennis or like all the, because everyone knows, like the money is in live sports, right? Like pretty much well, that's, that's the. That's, that's where th- it works, but so we do a lot of pro wrestling do a lot of boxing, a lot of MMA, but now we are branching out into soccer, rugby, motorsports, um, seven-on-seven A7FL football. We're airing them. We aired them last season. We're getting ready to start their season here in the next week or so. So um, On on pay-per-view or just straight up? On that, we're offering, we have something called Fight Plus. And for four ninety nine a month, you can watch a lot of this program. Up to very recently, it was mostly older programming that was originally for 20 or $30. Now you can watch as part of your subscription because, as you would guess, once a pay-per-view event's over, there's really not that much money earned. So it's a way to essentially sell day-old bread, whatever term you want to use. You know, it's, it's, it's a, a past the expiration date, the event. Uh, everybody who has gone buy it at the full price have. But now it's here. People still want to see it because they're good. It's good programming. But now we're starting to add live programming to that offer in Fight Plus, and uh, we see it as a real, you know, uh, viable alternative to live pay per view. So we're not leaving pay per view for a second. Right. We're just now expanding. So we're expanding in two ways. You can watch programming for free. You can buy it on pay per view, or you can watch it on SVOD or our Fight Plus subscription service. And then um, we're also now getting beyond, you know, we're called fight. So it's all about sports inside of ring, combat sports and stuff. We do not use the term combat sports in it. We're now about live sports entertainment. So the sweet spot for us is that we feel we have great technology of delivering the viewing experience, but it's all about being live. And as you can see, we are doing live shows all week long, and um, I think we do a good job with it. I got great people working on it. So when when WWE changes from their model to this Peacock model, is that good news for you, bad news for you, doesn't matter? It's actually uh, good news because it's very similar to what we're doing at Fight Plus in that we're making other product, and you're going to see other programming like that on our platform uh, that we're working on. So um, we're increasing our offering. Um, I think for, well, I think a lot of fans probably know this, but All Elite Wrestling Obviously, it's on TBS and TNT during the week. Well, we have the rights for the rest of the world outside the U.S. and Canada for AEW programming on a subscription basis. And it's doing very well. Everybody's very happy how the, the viewership is doing there. So you guys have, because I've seen the, 
I guess sort of how do you decide? Like I've seen the dark like on YouTube, like their YouTube, right? Or is it your YouTube? I mean, oh, dark, it's, it's their YouTube, but we also offer it um, to our subscribers uh, internationally uh, while they could watch on YouTube. Uh, we frankly we give them a good viewing experience because our whole system is designed. We're no longer, don't ever call us eye pay per view. We're. Um, I don't know what even that means. I. Internet. Oh, oh okay. right. That's what it used to be called when we launched. We consciously made a decision when we launched not to call it that. And is this strictly pay per view? <laughs> and and we're having a ride here. But it's 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 um um what we're what we're doing with it. We're, we're essentially we're a television network. Right. Because we want you to watch on your sixty five screen uh, screen sixty five inch screen TV, and we have the ability from your mobile to cast to your connected TV. Or you can buy it through Roku or Apple or Amazon, um, all the various ways, or your Vizio TV or your Samsung TV. So we got a lot of different. We're a native app on five different brands of television. So essentially, it's it's if you can watch Netflix on your TV, you can watch Fight. So is that when you say like the contract stuff? Is that what you're mostly working on a lot? Is like getting all because the well, again because the landscape's always changing with all these platforms. Well, we got over 600 uh, companies under contract with us. Uh, to provide programming. Some are obviously more active than others. Some are one-shot deals. Some are, I mean, I think we've done over 100 shows with GCW on a contract with them. So uh, it varies, and we are now working on more and more long-term relationships with the companies. Um, essentially, we have long-term relationships with many companies. We don't lose too many partners. Uh, the pandemic actually worked all right for us because we're able to, you know, never slow down for us. And we were able to expand, and we had the opportunity to do some very special events that um, we were the only place you could see it. Um, a motorsports event in Youngstown, Ohio, in May of 2020. I mean, the, the world was shut down at that time. Right. But we still figured out a way to do bring some of the top Supercross motorcycle riders in the world. Travis Pastrana is one name that I think a lot of people who's listening to this would know. Right. Racing there, and we were able to uh, present that and, and did quite well with it. So is the goal then to keep gobbling things up? We want to be like the one-stop shop for all your stuff, and we just want to well, keep acquiring? Like what's the long vision for it? You know, the most interesting thing here, this week's very special to me because we're here in Dallas right now, and you know, there's WrestleMania here in town, and we're doing all this programming on Fight. Six years ago, we launched in February, and WrestleMania was also in Dallas. Uh, I think it was roughly April 1st or something like that. So about six, eight weeks after we launched, we came up here. I literally stood on the street corner in front of the AT&T Stadium, passing out coolies and postcards, telling people about fight. We started at zero, and we just kept building and building. And it's all about relationships and stuff. And um, here we are now. We've done over 6,000 live shows since then. We have 6 million registered users on our platform. In the wrestling world, we're definitely in a place to go to see all things wrestling. I don't think anybody's done a more complete relationship together for that. So um, it's been very rewarding and exciting where we're at right now.